Joining us for a chat on the fan cast today, uh, he's been recovering from an ACL injury ever since April 10, three months ago when it happened. Clay Beams, uh, welcome to the show. How tough have the past three months been since you did your injury? Yeah, it's been, it was tough to start with. Um, obviously, the initial frustrations of realising that you're going to miss another season, which for me is all too familiar. So in a sense, I'm sort of used to it in a way, but yeah, very frustrating. Clay, can you tell us exactly what happened? We know it was at a training session. It was, um, I, I think no one else from outside the club actually saw what happened. There was, I never saw any vision of it. Can you just take us through what happened? And was it innocuous or was it... Um, a, no, it impactful? wasn't one of those ones. It, it was, um, I jumped up to spoil and um, sort of twisted in the air. So all my weight was going forward and uh, my left leg was a leg to hit the ground first. My boot dug in and I just uh, pretty much my knee went at right angles, so... Yeah, I knew straight away. Um, I didn't get any pain, which I knew with ACLs can happen. And, um, yeah, just the way my knee opened up and felt a big pop go, and, yeah, I knew I'd done it. Mate, there must be an initial period there once you knew it and it was diagnosed. Uh, there must be an initial period of, you know, feeling sorry for yourself, particularly as you've touched on there that you've been through these injuries before and your season's been written off a couple of times previously. Did you have that time of sort of feeling sorry for yourself before you straight, straighten yourself up? I don't know whether feeling sorry for yourself the right words, but I think disbelief. I just couldn't believe that it happened again. I, you know, I had a had a massive pro season, didn't miss a session, and was as fit as I'd ever been. My legs were as strong as I'd ever been, and for that to happen, sort of just yeah, ripped me guts out, I suppose. Towards the end of last season, and then over the preseason uh, this year, you had well and truly worked your way into the best twenty-two. Do you feel like this has um, been a, a major setback, or do you feel confident that you'll be able to get your way back there pretty pretty quickly after you recover? Yeah, it's more so just recovering from my knee. I, I, I'm confident that I can um, I can play at AFL level, and with me, it's just been injuries that's held me back, sort of thing. So I'm just just my focus is to get my knee right, and I'm sure the rest will take care of itself. What What are the emotions you go through there, Clay? You said it was disbelief initially. Is it, it must be a, a bit of a roller coaster, I'd imagine, um, particularly these first few months up until when you're able to to run again and get back into training. Oh, it is. It, you know what. Like, you, you have the initial thoughts of disbelief and frustration and, and anger and um, you soon, you know, within a couple of days you have to move on from that because you just got to look to the next phase, which is, um, you know, getting your surgery done and then um, recovering from that. And I'm at the point now where I'm just about to start running. So um, my rehab's actually gone really well and I'm probably a few weeks out of schedule. So um, that's exciting. I can sort of start to play golf again now, which I love doing. Um <laughs> Yeah, so for me, it's just, you know, by the end of the end of the season, I'll be in fairly good nick. Hopefully, I can join in in a couple of drills, like straight line stuff with the team. And, you know, yeah, it's tough, you know. Like when we when the boys had the win against Geelong, um, I was at the ground. And, you know, it, it sucks not to be out there with them. And you have all those thoughts after the game, but you just get you just stoked for the team. I'm, I'm just wondering, your brother also, obviously, Dane, he's had a, a few injury setbacks this year as well. Have you spent much time with him? Yeah, I was with him, with him over the weekend, so... Because uh, my surgeon's in Melbourne, I I obviously had the initial two weeks post-op in Melbourne, so I've seen a fair bit of him then. And um, I had my latest checkup just uh, last Thursday, so I stayed down for the weekend and was able to watch him play and caught up with some family members I hadn't seen in a few years, so it was actually good timing and it was good to get away because rehab can be a very lonely place sometimes. I was going to ask about that. Is there anyone else at the club that you lean on in these particular times? I know last year... You know, Brent Staker had Matthew Lornberger to sort of rehab different injuries, obviously, but they sort of had each other to work with. Is there anyone you speak to constantly or... Um, yeah, it's actually, I'm actually pretty lucky in a way. Um, Steve Wrigley done his knee, I think about three or four weeks before I did mine. So, yeah, we most of our rehab we've been able to do together. So we're sort of on the same program and, yeah, it'd be pretty pretty tough if you were in there <laughs> doing it on your own every day. So are you expecting to get a, a full pre-season in later this year? Yeah, so... I, so I should be, um, by the end of the season, I should be um, just about ready to join into the main group just without the change of direction stuff. So that takes a bit longer and I'll have the same sort of off-season program as the boys, running programs and um, obviously with an extra, with extra rehab stuff for my knee. But come day one of pre-season, I'll be, able to do, I'll be able to do everything up until, other than contact, sorry, and before goes to plan, I'll start that at Christmas, which is sort of how your pre-season's panned out anyway, so I'll be right for NAB Cup. Must be itching to prove yourself, Clay, because you've shown us glimpses <laughs> and shown everyone glimpses, but you, yeah, haven't, you really had fair, <laughs> haven't really had, been able to have a fair crack at it, have you? No, that's that's it. No, but it's just, it's the cards I've been dealt, I've got to deal with them, and all you can do is just put your head down and, and work away at it, and if it's meant to be, it'll be.
There were obviously rumours last year before you re-signed, as there always are, promising young player, has a, a star brother playing for a Victorian club that you might head down there. Has there ever been any doubt about staying at Brisbane for you or are you very firmly committed to the Lions? Nah, not at all, mate. I'm, I'm happy at the Lions. You know, they gave me an opportunity early on and I'm, I'm forever grateful for that and I feel like I owe them something. So um, I've got some good mates here at the club and I love Queensland, so no, I've never really thought about going anywhere else. Too much good weather up here, isn't there, Clay? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Good golf weather. <laughs> <laughs> so this this will be a good chance to work on your handicap? Yeah, hopefully that's the plan. So I'm a bit rusty at the moment because I haven't had a hit for three months, obviously, but hopefully it doesn't take me long to get back. So uh, just before we let you go then, Clay, you have been sitting on the sidelines, like the rest of us, observing the boys this year. How do you reckon the season's gone and how is the, the, the feeling within the club at the moment? Obviously the form, the form of the boys has been inconsistent, obviously having a really good pre-season and... Um, doing well in the Nag Cup, but what are we? I think we're five and nine um, with uh, eight or so games to go. But there's some winnable games to come, and you know it's just about stringing the four quarters together and week after week being being consistent. I don't think we've, we haven't won two straight this year, so this weekend's a good chance to do that. And just the feeling um, around the club, Clay. There was a lot of um, up and down, particularly early in the season. But you've had uh, Lewenberger and and Richie and these guys re-signing, and there seems to be a bit more. Positivity is it is it still quite positive? Oh, definitely. Team? You know, like we've all the boys are real close. You know, because we m- most of the boys in Brisbane, unlike me, I'm the only sort of one of few Queensland boys. But um, you know, they, we've only got each other up here, so the boys form close relationships and we lean on each other. And you know, it's it's, it's always always up and about the group. Uh, well, thanks for joining us on the fan cast today. All the best with the continued recovery and with the golf. And uh, we can't wait to see <laughs> you back out there again next season. No worries, thanks, all. This week for the Lions, the reserves come up against Redland. It's at Cooper Roo, 1.30 on Saturday. They've been, uh, well, they seem to have recaptured their good form. An amazing second quarter. I think it was 10 goals mm. against the Gold Coast. So uh, make sure you go along and check out the reserves before the seniors. We'll later that night back in the traditional Saturday night time slot at the Gabba. It's a 7.40 match against North Melbourne and a lot hinges on this one, Mike. Very hard to pick too, isn't it? Uh, I struggled with last week's match. This week's is the same. It's very, very hard to pick. I think North Melbourne's very best footy is probably a fraction good for Brisbane, but Brisbane's show their their improvement over the last month have been really impressed with and their um, attitude towards the contest have been very impressed with. So I'm um, not going to be at all surprised if Brisbane can sneak another win, which they really, really need. It would be great if they could. We'll be back next week to review that match. That's been the Fancast. Bye. See ya.